use the term African-American. I use the term Africans because that's what we are. We are Africans in America. There's nothing American about us. Our history has only been a history of struggle in America. We are the only ethnic group in America who have to shed our blood to make reform. To get the vote, we must shed our blood. To get our children to school, we must shed our blood. To get on a bus and sit where we want, we must shed our blood. To even get in a filthy five and 10 cent store, we must shed our blood. So I don't see how we could be American. We're Africans in America struggling against American capitalism. And only until it's destroyed will we enjoy the rights that everyone else is speaking of. Human progress does not stand still. It moves. We came here as Africans. One of the first organizations we had fighting for us is known as the Free African Society. The very first independent organization we had in this country was the church. It was known as the African Methodist Episcopalian Church. So from Africans, our oppressor has changed us to colored, to Negro, to this, to that. We understand it's a step. Coming to black had a powerful point because the point was that we were oppressed because of this color of our skin. And this was racism. But this fight is not just a fight over the color of our skin. A fight for power is a fight for land. When Mr. Llewellyn speaks about uh, power, he's talking about land. Our land is Africa. America is not our land. It belongs to the American Indians. And we have a right to stand and take a moral struggle with them. The error of the thinking here is that most people think that Africans in America came here just like other immigrant groups did. All other immigrants came to America expecting a better way of life. We started in hell, which was a slave ship, and we're still in hell. And this incorrect assumption makes it appear as if we've made a contribution with our culture. Our culture has been trampled upon, not the others. Any contribution we've made to America is the test of the strength of our culture in spite of this oppression. We are Africans, and that's exactly where we're going. Is that going to, is the term, in your view, is that where you end it? Is that's that where, where it stops? Where the, the content, the content was African. The label has been changed to confuse us. If we came as Africans, how do we end up as Americans? How do you well, ever, you know, let, let, I would wait. beg to differ that my, my ancestors came here in a slave boat. They didn't. They came from the island of Jamaica, and they came on their own because they thought it was a better place well, to be came, in Jamaica. They, Jamaica. they came as slaves to Jamaica. I was born in Trinidad. That's where the slaves should drop them. We're all Jamaica, slaves. Right. We're all slaves. We can't solve this. Nah. Nah. Jamaica, or, did you decide to drop in Jamaica? The white man dropped you in Jamaica and brought you to Mississippi. Right. So you don't define yourself by the enemy? <laughs> no, I define myself as a place <laughs> where I'm uh, where I used to be or where I thought so I was. So if you're fighting on a slave ship, we fought on a slave ships. We fought on the slave ships. Did you call yourself right. a water? We need people like Kwame Torrey back. Like our black celebrities, our black capitalist class is trash. Look at the people who presented as leaders. Listen to what Kwame Torrey said. That's why I love that you led with this because you gave me a reason to talk about this because look at what Kwame Torrey focuses. Kwame Torrey, his focus is black liberation. And he embraces his African lineage in the pursuit of solidarity and for us to come together against our oppressors. Meanwhile, when you look at the mindset of black capitalists and black celebrities, you have one of the biggest coons of them all, one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest examples of how black celebrities and, ba and black uh, millionaires and billionaires, they see themselves as uh, being rich first, they're class loyal first, Black second, they all they turn to like these patriot flag humping motherfuckers. Yeah. And look at look at Morgan Freeman. Black History Month is an insult, and so is the term African American. Now, my reaction to this, when I see this, because we whenever you see black celebrities when they speak out, it's always on some absolute dumb shit. <laughs> of context, like so we have racial income inequality that's worse right now than it is. Then was at the height of the civil rights era. You have the black community under siege, and we got the story we're gonna do later today, CJ. Um, how the police state is stealing civil asset state, forfeit. Asset you have all these massive problems that is going on that's plaguing the black community. You got the government that is destroying our wealth, waging and using state violence against us. There is this guy who was just ate alive by bed bugs. You guys see that story. Guy in the lot about beg buzz, but they want to talk about gulags under Stalin. You know what I mean? So <laughs> instead of focusing on these right. like stuff right. that really impact black wealth, that impact black culture, you got uh, the black celebrities. I don't know why they start other playing, but you got black celebrities always focused on nonsense like this. And Kwame Torre just essentially shut down this nonsense argument. That's why I love you play that clip because I literally just tweeted this out today of Morgan Freeman's. And and if you look, if you Google Morgan, he'd been in the news because he got on one of these uh, boomer tirades about the term African American. You know what I mean? They always do this nonsense. So we need, like, we need the black community, we need black culture to reject the nonsense that comes from the black capitalist class and black celebrity culture. And I'm gonna just stop it there because I can preach on this all day, but it's fucking. <laughs> well, I want to chime in. 
Go ahead, go ahead, CJ. Go ahead. I'll be right. Yeah, so I'll chime in on Morgan Freeman because um this particular class of people, the black capitalists, that not only they're just th- you know what I mean, they don't just sit and be quiet. It's the ones yeah. that come out and half the coons, you know, Very every true, now and then. And he's one of them that's more consistent, he's more consistently, you know, coming up underground to do his cooning, especially when it's around like military stuff, when it's around. Uh, race and it's and it's uh it's particularly I, I mean i don't know if he's always been like this oh yeah he's he been like this for as long as i you know, know like because i remember yeah. i used to like morgan freeman because I, I saw lean on me i love lean on me dude i still think that's yeah. I, I love that movie even when even like i know now that it, that guy's backstory is bullshit and that bummed me out you guys know that they do backstory <laughs> completely bullshit in that movie like everything they claimed he did he did not do like he he, he instituted tough uh, tough love, tough on the students policy, and that failed. But then they made a movie like, yeah, this tough on being tough on the black people, tough on crime shit actually works. That's not what happened. But anyway, I still love the movie before <laughs> it, I it was, Yeah, it, it, it was it was like it was like the, the head the head slave of yeah. the of the plantation. Look, he got all the slaves to, to produce cotton real fast. Yeah. And that's and then and what how what what was rewarded. It wasn't like he was radical. Why would they make a movie of that? They made a movie of this. And Nick will be back in just a second. But continuing along the lines, there he goes right there. But I accidentally uh I hit the wrong button. I'm I'm actually locked out of this article to shame. Uh, but this headline I can't even even really see it. It said this headline is Morgan Freeman said it's an insult to be called an African American. And if you guys don't know, he he gone this field so many times. His whole thing is about men don't call me African American. I'm just an American. Shut the fuck up. You guys got these black capitalists become patriotic blue lickers. And to be honest, they got good reason. I mean, they yeah. not part of this boy. And then you know what happens to you, Nick? You go on, you go on a tweet storm, and then you get white liberals who have Morgan Freeman as their reference. Look at you. Yeah, yep. I'm gonna call you a coon because yep. I got Morgan Freeman and and all these other black capitalists who are saying this is the black way. So, and if you're against those black capitalists, I'm against you. And it's real, it's real and, and funny. Oh, my bad. But the reason Not why I put that way. up, because Kwame Torre in the intro clip just dismantles that argument. Completely dismantles and why your mind had to be completely colonized for the want to uh, go away from your African roots, go away from your tribe, mm-hmm. your people. Imagine how colonized your brain has to be, CJ. You'd be like, I'm not an African American. I'm an American. I'm, I bleed red, white, and blue. <laughs> the country that was built on our slave labor that right. continues to implement a police state that you guys were freaking out. Like everything you guys describe the United States as is what you guys describe gulags. You guys understand? As, as a communist. He, he might- I see I see Morgan Freeman. Sorry, I see Morgan Freeman as that Dave Chappelle character that's blind. He's like a oh, black yeah. KKK member. That's why that, Only that he's just not blind. <laughs> which that's why that worse. segment was so uh, good. That though like really great comedy has to have a bit of truth to it. You know what I mean? It yeah. could be an exaggerated truth. But when Dave Chappelle popped that character out, everyone know what he was talking about. <laughs> like that was that was obviously an exaggerated uh, version of what a black coon, a sellout right. looks like. You know what I mean? But that right, that, right. that that skit, I mean, doesn't land if there's right. not a, uh, any sort of truth to it. You know what I mean? Whatever it's, version of that person in your life, that's an exaggerated yeah. version. So it's what it's a spectrum. So some it might be some people, Nick. That's not an exaggerated version. <laughs> it might be a small, small amount of people now, and the vast majority is, is not that. But I'm just saying it could be a, a wide slop, and the majority of us are not, you know, seeing this version. We're seeing the Morgan Freeman version. We're seeing the uh, I forget the guy that made the green light, John something, whatever his name. That's married to the to the hated shit lib, you know, the model girl that's yeah, John Legend. That's his name. John Legend, yeah, that's another John one Legend. I think of is kind of like a in that sort of elk, not as bad as Morgan Freeman, but well, um, he, but he's he up there. But live, though. yeah, and but meanwhile, this is what RBN is doing. You know what I mean? You have all these black capitalists that literally have literally several billion dollars that they could c- accumulate. Because you're talking about there's three athletes that have already made a billion dollars in sports. That's Tiger Woods. That's a four. I'm sorry. That's Tiger Woods. That's Mayweather. That's LeBron. And that's Jordan. 
It was they were on the front of yep. Spirit of Sports Illustrated, and when they all hit four, four, uh, when they all hit a billion, made. So you're talking about that's just four, and then you got all the celebrities from from uh, Bill Cosby. I only mention him because he's ri- he's one of the richer ones, and uh, you know all the other people in the background, like Byron Allen, who's trying to purchase something. So why is all these problems happening with black people? And we have these rich black people with a little bit of power within the white power structure choosing to not do anything. And I'm gonna, I'm actually going to break it down to something that is more simpler than that. Mm. And not even just like, could you bring up the, uh, the special case, you know, the, the, the yes. black billionaires that's rare. Now I'm gonna break it down to something even smaller. What about black landlords? What about black business owners? Because you talking about the billionaires, what about the but- uh, petite bourgeoisie among the black community? These people are upper middle class, five hundred thousand dollars a year, a million dollars a year. What are they doing? What other than exploiting black labor? Because that's what black business is. Black business is just a bunch of people. They got business in the hood, but they exploiting their labor instead of white person. You know what I mean? <laughs> how how yeah. many black? How many that's black? That's not progress. And, and <laughs> that's if not you're progress. Not being too dramatic, CJ. I'm asking you this to you, this to you too. You from Compton? Uh, I'm, I'm from. I'm literally a Midwestern boy, right? How many of these black businesses have you guys seen that was like, oh my God, have you guys seen the amazing benefits this black business is giving to the workers? <laughs> In fact, they get flooded with applications. There are right. black people applying to this black, black business all over the city, all over the region. People are traveling to work at this black business because they are so great to their black employees. Doesn't happen. Have you guys ever seen that? Doesn't happen. It usually is some, other, some <laughs> black guy cosplaying as a white oligarch. That's what yeah. it is. Like, like so Martin Luther have- King's what? dream is not for your exploiter, your oppressor to be replaced just with a black overseer. That's not the dream. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. That's that's that that's not the dream now, at all. Go and, ahead. I, uh, and to my point, I'm gonna uh because I, I, I almost forgot my point, but uh I remember this article we broke down before, and I actually still see liberals say this to this day. When they said, when you look at what the Biden administration has done for black people, he has some bullshit program that gives grants to black businesses. That's his black, pro- that's his black agenda. That's what Democrats always do. Not just Biden. I, I want to be clear. Not just Biden. Democrats in general, they always do this. Like, we got this plan. We got this initiative. We care about the black community. We're going to uplift black entrepreneurs by giving them a 25% off interest rate. Like, how is this helping the black community at all? <laughs> and, then, and then the liberal media, oh my God, Biden and Democrats, they got this black business agenda. Like, that is not. How is this helping JB? For example, how does this help JB? How do how these black entrepreneur uh, programs how does it help that's such a good point. how does it help yeah. me how does it help the black poor how does it help the black working class they have nothing like that guys at all at all and that's why you see the racial income inequality gap continue to get worse because you got the black millionaires they balling you got the black business entrepreneurs they balling meanwhile the people they exploiting is worse off than the white working class because black managers got their boot on them just like the white right. managers got the book on their workers and this is how they sell equality. This is how they sell. We've hit the finish line of equality. Look, look at John yeah. Legend. Look at, you know, all these black celebrities and they think that's achievement. They say hey, there's a black person on the Supreme Court. How does that affect me? Like, what does that do right. for the regular black oh, person? I find that article. That article I was, we reacted to, sorry, my bad, but a long time ago. Uh, where remember that that article is like uh, what Biden did for Black America. Let's see, I'm gonna type Biden. Yeah, and you can Black. pull it up whenever you want. I'm just showing our graphics for our yeah, chapter. I'm, just, just yeah, pull we, it you up know, we just, ready. we just ra- I don't know if this is it. Um, I actually I think this would be funny to look at anyway. But this is the fact sheet. Uh, the Biden Mer- Biden Harris administration uh, advances equality opportunity for Black Americans. So this is the White House uh, website. This is what Democrats say. When they were like, what's your black agenda? Hey, there are more opportunities for the black bourgeoisie. We got Kareem Jean Pierre. We uplifting <laughs> black capitalists. What uh, Lee, I, I, Lloyd I, I, Austin. I, Lloyd Austin, the, the freaking, uh, 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 I forget, he was on the board of Raytheon. Yeah. And Raytheon is out this way. Raytheon is right here off the freeway. Like I could probably drive up. Well, I mean, you know what? I haven't been dri- over there in a while. And it was there when I used to fly a lot. And it's like, yes, yeah, a Raytheon. You can see it right when you're driving to LAX. You can see the Raytheon yeah. corporate location, man. Crazy. Yeah, they, um, this, there it is right here. This already knew. I already knew this is the one line I was just looking for. Uh, President Biden has led the most equitable, equitable economic recovery on record, 
<laughs> that means fucking nothing. <laughs> Creating more than 12 million jobs since coming to office and helping create new economic opportunity for African Americans, including black owned businesses. <laughs> there it is. Like I wasn't it didn't take that long to find. There it is. That's and made long overdue investments into black communities. What what does that mean? What does that mean? When, when you say investments to the black community, are you talking about the medical debt problem? Are you no, talking, about, talking about the police? The police. <laughs> yes. are you, do they are you include that? <laughs> when, when they say we make investments to the black community, like we find the cops more, we invest in the community. <laughs> think, think this later. We we, uh... we invest into black businesses, so that invests to you somehow because we believe in trickle down economics. Liberals who claim they don't, they believe in the black community. So they say trickle down economics is bullshit. But according to liberals, give all the money to black businesses and somehow they can trickle down to us. You guys see how they believe in trickle down economics for black people? Mm-hmm. That's that's the liberal economic agenda. Anyway, I was just talking shit. I, if I can find an article, I would. But I don't know if you remember this, CJ, but like a few weeks ago where they, where this article was like, the people that say Biden have done enough for black Americans. So I, I made a complete comprehensive list. And I, I literally, when I first took that article, my eyes perked. I was like, wait, 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 let's wait. Let me see what you say. Yeah, I remember and you that. that statement, he appointed Katanji Brown Jackson <laughs> to the Supreme Court. Kamala <laughs> Harris as the first vice president. Cream what? Jean Pierre. And then he said he led an historic investment to black businesses, which may or may not be true. Like, to be honest, they could be making that shit up. But at the end of the day, you see, that's mm-hmm. what they lean into. None for the black poor, none for the black workers. None of that will actually increase the quality of life. Because despite you guys know the record amount of black millionaires, record amount of black millionaire millionaires, but racial income inequality between black and white people are worse than ever, worse than 1960s. How does that make sense? So what did that really tell you? That means black millionaires are overcompensating for like when you look at the raw numbers, the black millionaires are making it look better than it actually is. Yes. You know I mean? <laughs> yes. Oh my god, look at all the black millionaires. They're like motherfuckers, look at look at how black people live in South Carolina and Alabama. And, like I was there, I was in South Carolina. What is Shama? Before. How does Shama? Uh, how does Shama describe it? Didn't she describe it as like like a third world? She yeah, said she is. said I'm from India, and that's how you know using the uh, ruling class language is. I would describe it as a third world when she said she. The was UN, down the UN, and I I report on this many times. Uh, they send a, a inspector to look at Louisiana, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, and he concluded that the infrastructure, the quality of life. Like access to clean water and stuff like that is worse than developing countries. You know what I mean? Third world countries. That's what he used. Mm. And uh, I always got to mention this. I think you guys know, but uh, I don't like the term third uh, third world. It's easier to use because people understand it. But a lot of people they like, oh my god, that's a third world developing country. Meanwhile, that country got people got healthcare there. <laughs> people can raise a family there. I, don't, I still opting not to have kids because what the fuck? I'm gonna have kids while I'm paying this goddamn rent. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all my bills, that doesn't even make sense to me. But meanwhile, the third world country, people can raise, they can raise a kid, raise a family, they can buy a home without being in debt. And there's a long, there's a video I played from Uganda like months and months ago where this woman was like, you guys say Uganda is poor. I own my home. I own my car. <laughs> people can raise their kids in Uganda. Now, I am not, uh-huh. not get what I'm saying wrong. I am not saying Uganda has money. I am not saying they are well off. But when you say third world, you got oh, this is a third world country. What is that? Where are we? What do you call people who are working class people who are opting not to have kids? Like many, how many New York Times and reports have you guys seen yes. with millennials opting not to have kids? What do you call that? Or working people not having kids because they can't afford it? You got people that skipping medical treatments because they cannot afford a doctor. Is that third world? You know, you guys see how that's a, you see how that kind of propaganda guy can do. Oh, we the first world. We the greatest ever been. Meanwhile, look at those dirty uh, people in the global style, they third world trash. Meanwhile, they happier than people in America. All, all polls always show uh, international surveys. America's among the most unhappiest people in the world. People people way on paper right. poorer than us. Happy as motherfucker. You know why? Because they poor as hell, but they can raise their kids. They can see a doctor. <laughs> they got a house they're not in debt over. You got and this is yep. things that American they, their mind is so decolonized. Yeah, you make a hundred thousand dollars a year, but you're in medical debt, motherfucker. You don't own your house, you don't own your car. Well, how, how wealthy and prosperous are you? You know, you're not happy because you locked down this office job, so you're taking these pills because people told you your brain is broken. You know what I mean? These are things that people don't even realize how 
our society has failed us and you've been th- you think you're happy and then people then we got insane depression rates insane suicide rates insane mental health and people are like, oh my god we have first world country people's brains are breaking and i'm and not Nick, saying this, this is you get mad when i say this sorry i'll, I'll pass to you no go but ahead you, no go ahead you get mad when i say i'm not denying that mental health is not a thing i'm saying that people are misdiagnosing the problem the mental health problem is because of our failing society but go ahead, right. I know you want to chime in. Right, these conditions. Uh, I forget, uh, you know, Professor Anthony Zunkas, who deals with like trauma. Um, he was talking about this, like uh, how how these are conditions of despair because people are in despair of what the system is doing to them. 